let's just get started taking a look at the, at some of the existing curves functionality and then we'll look at the flex feature as an example of some of the secondary functionality that you've got in SOLIDWORKS. There's several different types of curves that you can create. The, the different ways that you can create a curve in SOLIDWORKS are going to be a spline on surface which actually allows you to sketch directly on a 3D face that's actually a sketch feature rather than a curve feature. An equation-driven curve where you'll enter in an equation and SOLIDWORKS will create a curve feature for you. You got a curve through XYZ points where you enter in XYZ points with actual coordinates and SOLIDWORKS creates a curve that goes through those points. There's also one called Curve Through Reference Points, where you select points rather than specify them with coordinates. But the most popular ones, one of them is not on here, is going to be a helix or a spiral. Then the other most popular one is a projected curve. You'll find these features under Insert, Curve, Split line, projected, composite, curve, helix. There's also one that's called an intersection curve where you can take two planes or a plane and a surface or two surfaces and get a curve at the intersection of those two entities. Now again, that's not really a curve feature. That's actually a 3D sketch feature. So uh, SOLIDWORKS sometimes confuses curve features with 3D sketches. Let me demonstrate a little bit for you. To start a helix, I'm going to start by sketching a circle. Okay, and from here I'll select the uh, helix and spiral. Now there are a lot of different ways to, to specify the helix. And I'm going to come back to those. But what I want to show is that a curve feature is this thin blue entity. If I were to create a 3D sketch, then uh, create a spline, okay, and we'll just put in a bunch of points around here like this, and we can go look at it in the third dimension and, and tug and pull. So this is a real, a real 3D kind of potato chip entity. You can see the difference between a curve, which is very thin, and a 3D sketch, which is very thick. Now some of the 3D sketch entities that are going to look like curves or sound like curves are going to be the convert entities will actually create a, a sketch for you. There's the intersection curve, which we mentioned earlier, and this is really really a 3D sketch rather than a curve. It's not very helpful that in, in some other CAD packages, splines are what are referred to as curves. So <laughs> uh, it, it's just a little bit of a terminology glitch and, and SOLIDWORKS is very inconsistent in this way. So um, just be aware that there's a difference between a curve and something that may look and act like a curve, but it's really a 3D sketch. So uh, let me just hide this 3D sketch and let's go back to working with the, uh, the Helix. Now the Helix is a very powerful tool. There are several ways that you can determine a Helix. Uh, first is pitch and revolution. So you have, to, uh, you have to select two of these three, a pitch, revolution, and height. And so you can pick any two of those and determine your helix. Now pitch is the height between revolutions. So uh, what that means is the distance from here to here in one revolution. Okay, so if I change the pitch, notice how it's getting shorter. Because we're, we're uh, determining by pitch and revolution and we've got only one revolution so changing the pitch also changes the height. All right, so uh, we can also control the number of revolutions, and SOLIDWORKS allows you to control this by quarter of a revolution. 
you you need to also be aware that there is a there is a control over here uh, called start angle and this depends on uh, where you've selected the initial circle that the helix is based on so this really should default to zero because most people don't know about this control and most people don't use it they just take whatever is given to them the next thing i'd like to talk about here is the variable pitch so when you do a variable pitch you you start to specify the helix in a uh, in a chart format you would say oh you need the pitch to be a certain number of millimeters per revolution and we can go down to say 100 and for how many revolutions do you want that to happen well let's say five and we need to specify a diameter so you can also have a, a variable diameter here so you can tell it 400 it becomes very very controllable so we can go in here and tell this uh, 10 uh, change this to something a little more drastic like 50 so there we, we're getting a much tighter helix on this end uh, we could also change the diameter to something uh, a little more drastic that's easier to see such as a 600 okay so now you can see that the helix tapers gets closer together and the, the uh, variable pitch helix gives you a lot of control I mean it's almost addictive you could really uh, really kind of go crazy with that and you see that I'm spending way too much time on this but uh, okay let's change back to constant pitch uh, you can tell it also you could do a tapered helix if you don't want to do the chart you could just give it an angle uh, we can taper it inward or outward it's a lot of different ways to control the helix I want to mention this because a lot of people lose track of it there's a spiral definition of in here and a spiral is really just a flattened helix that uh, that has a certain pitch the pitch in this case is the distance from here to here so you can make them go clockwise or counterclockwise same is true with the regular helix so if you're creating a you know left-handed thread or, or whatever uh, you could do that with the helix this shows up on the feature manager as a helix spiral and in the graphics window it uh, it shows up as a curve that's very nice here's one other thing that I want to show you in for uh, uh, for curves let's use a couple of splines okay now people don't always use use splines but I just want to demonstrate what's called a projected curve okay so we've drawn this uh, sine wave looking thing from the front plane point of view now from the top plane I'm going to go back and use the uh, use the spline again and make it a like a C shape so it's got a distinctive type of curvature from these two different views now what a projected curve does is it takes these two curves projects extrudes them through space and it finds the intersection so if I go to uh, insert curve projected and uh, when you do a projected curve you get you can project a sketch onto a face which I'm not doing here or you could project a sketch onto another sketch and that's what I'm doing so you need to select two sketches we'll do that here and there's that check mark on the right mouse button so I'll say okay and so now I've created a curve that from one point of view looks like the sine wave and from the other point of view looks like the C and this is called a projected curve notice that both those original curves that I drew or here I'm getting my terminology mixed up but both of those original splines that I sketched um, 
are under here and you can go back and edit these and uh, you, know, you know flip convexity or change something um, if you if you want to do that so it's it matters which one is shorter so if I uh, so if I pull this one back and I delete that relationship there I can pull this back like this and that way my curve only goes that far and it's not going to represent the entire sine wave okay so it's really just going to do the shorter of the two curves uh, I could could make this one extra long and it will still only do the shorter of the two curves which in this case is the sine wave so in any case that is the projected curve I use that from time to time. It's probably the second most used after the helix or spiral. Next, let's take a look at the flex feature. Okay, to, uh, to demonstrate the flex feature, I'm going to use this spoon. And this, this spoon has, uh, has a couple of curves in it. The curves set up a, uh, a sweep feature. And I'm not really here to show you how this one was modeled, but... Uh, some of the things that we're talking about in the course of uh, this video have been, have been used here. So let's use the flex feature on this. And let's talk about what the flex feature is for. Let's go to insert, features, flex. The flex input is really just what body do you want to flex. So let's flex this body. What types of flex can we create? We can bend twist, taper, or stretch. Now let me preface this by saying that flex is really the type of feature that you want to use for possibly a visual representation rather than a really detailed design type feature. If you want to design something that's bent, then design it bent. Don't use the flex to create the bend. I would use flex to make a, a pictorial representation of a uh, of a bent spoon or a, of a rubber port cover that's been pulled back or if you want to create a decorative feature that's something that's twisted don't use flex to do it use a uh, use a sweep to do something like that and so you're actually designing something that's swept and twisted rather than using flex to do that. The whole idea here is that SolidWorks is going to take whatever's between these two planes and it's going to apply whatever process that you've put to it here. So you got trim plane one and trim plane two. You can use various methods to locate these, but I'm just going to, uh, to drag them here um, to get them positioned and the fact that there's no selection here just means that you haven't created a parametric selection such as a uh, a sketch point or a or a hard model point to uh, to place that plane and from here there's there's two different ways of of bending it you can give it an angle or you can give it a radius and remember these two are going to work in opposite directions so the bigger your angle is the smaller your radius is going to be and vice versa okay uh, so if you move this plane then you notice that the that the bend changes because the area being deformed is slightly different. Um, so we can change that now to twist. Notice now that the spoon is twisted. And here I can just apply an angle to it. And it's actually twisting the solid model. So it's making a change to the existing solid rather than creating something new. Uh, you can taper that, <laughs> which gives you kind of a funny result. Okay, and, uh, or, or you can stretch it, which just means 
pulling it out a little bit and uh, making it a little bit longer than it was. So those are the four modes of the flex tool. You use it for editing existing solids. It doesn't really create anything new. And I would use it for a looks like model only. I wouldn't use it for real design. Pictorial representation is pretty good, but uh, I wouldn't cut a mold based on geometry that I've used the flex feature for. That's just a smattering of the uh, secondary type features that you can create in SolidWorks. Thanks for watching.